the um, truth social platform is struggling mightily. We have recently learned about the degree to which truth social essential. Yeah, is uh, uh, struggling when it comes to user activity. But truth social is also struggling when it comes to the finances. And as I have said before, a free speech platform for the sake of being a free speech platform is not that exciting, compelling or titillating a proposition to most users. And in the same way, when you hear here is a show that is just it's a free speech show. Oh, OK. Sounds pretty boring if there's really no other reason for existence, raison d'etre. If there's no other reason for existence, then to be a free speech show. And quite frankly, that's what's going on with Truth Social and it is failing. However, this did not stop the failed former president, Donald Trump, from posting video after video after post after video after video after video after article after post after video over the last 12 or so hours. And I want to focus in on three specific videos here because of their relevance and the importance to the following 10 and a half months that we face here in the United States, which will have both global and domestic impact. The first is the claim from Donald Trump that President Joe Biden has already rigged the 2024 election. Does he cite any evidence? I'm not going to spoil it for you. Let's see. But the argument is Biden's already done it. It's already rigged. 2024 will go down as the year of great and fully coordinated illegal election interference. Will it? By crooked Joe Biden, the worst and most corrupt president in the history of the United States. Right. The DOJ, FBI, AGs and DAs throughout the country. But despite it all, in the end, there will be a big and glorious victory for those <laughs> brave and valiant patriots who want to make America great again. We will win and we will win like never before and we will turn our country around. Thank you very much. Yeah, he'll turn the country around instead of stock market up. We'll have stock market down instead of unemployment down. We'll have unemployment up instead of GDP up. We'll have GDP. What exactly is he going to turn around? But this is exactly what we saw in 2020. And this is why it's so scary. In the summer of 2020, before that election, Donald Trump started making very similar claims. It's been rigged. Everybody's involved. A.G. Biden, this, that, the other thing. Um, and then he almost stole the election after inciting a violent insurrection. It is not prudent, in my opinion, to assume that it will fail in 2024. And I'm going to be saying this a lot between now and then, because these are the stakes he's already making even earlier than in 2020. He's making the same allegations about what Democrats are supposedly doing absent any evidence. Trump then moves on in another one of these late night videos on Troth Central to the issue of presidential immunity. And Trump argues, if I can't have presidential immunity, nobody can. And so I will have Joe Biden arrested. This is a dangerous autocrat. I don't know. I don't know where all the bells are that I can ring to remind you of how dangerous an autocrat this dude is and how dangerous he will be as president. Here he is saying, and you, you stick with it, OK, it's worth sticking with it. If I don't get immunity, nobody does. And that means Joe Biden's getting arrested. Everybody agrees that if I'm not entitled to presidential immunity, which I should be I'm doing the affairs of state, I'm doing the affairs of the president of the United States and doing it well. <laughs> we wouldn't have any of these problems if I were president. But if I'm not entitled to immunity as president, every other president would get that. Then crooked Joe Biden would not be entitled to immunity. And OK, I mean, listen, I'm so far. There's no special treatment for one president or another. If there are reasons to say that immunity is relevant with Trump, then we would say Biden has the same immunity for the same actions. Now, for different actions, we may be talking about a different story, but so far he's not saying anything too crazy. When he left office, he would be 
I assume, prosecuted for the horrible job he did in Afghanistan. What? Killing soldiers, leaving Americans behind, leaving billions of dollars worth of military, brand new, beautiful military equipment that I bought in the hands of the Taliban and basically surrendering. And there was no reason we have to deal through strength. But notice, by the way, that very interesting cut they just threw in there. This is because Trump struggles to record these in one take. Very unnatural cuts. All of the horrible things that he's done, allowing horrible. the attack on Israel, which would have never happened, the attack on Ukraine, which would have never happened, the possible attack on Taiwan, which possibly will happen. The possible future attack is Joe Biden's fault. Losing our energy independence. By the way, that's a lie. The U.S. produced more oil and natural gas in 2023 than any other country and then the more than the U.S. in any other year. Just lies, lies all the way down. But maybe most of all, for purposes of immunity and going after Joe Biden is allowing millions and millions of people to pour into our border. Yeah, millions and millions of people came in through our border under Trump as well. But it's only Biden who should be prosecuted for that. Coming from jails and prisons, coming from mental institutions and insane asylums and terrorists coming by the thousands. If I don't have immunity, then no other president would have immunity. And Joe Biden certainly wouldn't have had immunity. All right. Would he, as an example, have immunity for all of the money he took from Russia? or for all of the money he took from China. Remember, there's no evidence of that as well. So listen, you get the picture. I would be fine with us saying today Trump doesn't get immunity and Biden doesn't get immunity. I think that this plays in Biden's favor because there's no crimes I'm aware of for which there is evidence that Joe Biden committed. <laughs> so if we want to all agree right now, neither of them gets immunity. We'll play it right down the middle. I believe that that's absolutely fine. Trump also in these really strange vlog style videos arguing that Mar-a-Lago is worth 900 million to one point eight billion dollars. Wow. This is just a small piece of Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, probably the most expensive land anywhere in the world. A New York State judge named Ngoran values it at just 18 million dollars in order. To Remember that that is the real estate tax assessment of the property, not the market value to help his and racist A.G. James, Letitia James, a racist and a corrupt person. It's a horrible case. It's a rigged case against me. So they say it's worth 18 million dollars when in fact it's worth 50 to 100 times that amount. No jury, no victim, only profits. And All right. So anyway, Trump says it's worth uh, 900 by his math, somewhere around one to two billion dollars. He says it's the most valuable land ever anywhere. In case you are curious, if you want to talk about the most expensive land in the world, usually we talk about Monaco, number one, Hong Kong, number two, London, number three. New York City, number four and Tokyo, number five. You might notice that West Palm Beach or Palm Beach or wherever Mar-a-Lago is, is not on the top five or the top 10 or the top 20 or the top 30 or the. T OK, you get it. Um, it's not up there in terms of the most valuable land anywhere. This guy's unhinged. We need to move on where Trumpism goes to the dustbin of history. Let's make it happen in November. So much of the news media that we consume is corporately owned with all kinds of financial and political interests that influence the reporting. And our sponsor, Ground News, takes every source for every news story, breaks down who owns the media outlet, shows you how the story is being spun across the political spectrum. For example, I'm looking at this story about Republicans in Congress trying to pass a law to keep Palestinian refugees out of the US. Ground News shows us here the great article that The Hill wrote about it. But besides that, only right wingers are reporting about it. Fox News, Breitbart, Washington Times, probably because it's something their readers will love and will eat up. Ground News lets you see how Breitbart's headline for the story 
is twisted to bash Joe Biden. This is an extraordinary tool for comparing coverage, for helping you spot sensational content, identify the facts, especially with, for example, this escalation of the Hamas Israel war that is taking place. Extraordinarily contentious issue. Language and perspective really matter here. When you go to ground.news slash Pacman, you'll get 30 percent off their vantage plan, which gives you unlimited access for around five bucks a month. They also have a plan that costs under a dollar a month. The link is down below.